Greetings, welcome to the third installment of the Dharma Talks. What I'm going to cover in this discussion is the um, reasoning why true spiritual paths are uh, very rare today. You find that if you look to a lot of these traditions that are circulating today, uh, the well-known traditions of most major world religions, including my own and Buddhism, and many people are finding that the leaders and teachers of those traditions are falling left and right to the wayside as coming under the influence of very negative behavior. Uh, you have the Christian ministers basically are nothing more than businessmen and women in a beautiful suit, smiling, perfect teeth, perfect hair, perfect skin. I mean, they're just mannequins stood up in front of the millions of dollars congregation halls worshiping success and wealth <clears throat> as their new god. Uh, you see uh, many of the religions embracing extreme violence and uh, the use of guns and violence as a manner of a blessing to their religion. Uh, there are uh, churches now that are blessing their AK-47s or, or their assault rifles or whatever they bring to church. Uh, the, the level of insanity that that represents is beyond measure. Uh, Buddhism, of course, it's coming out in the media more and more that the uh, various teachers are finding great scrutiny of their manners with which they're treating their Sangha members. Um, and many well-known teachers are coming under charges of uh, sexual uh, assault and uh, making very gross sexual passes and language to their students, especially the females, by the male teachers. It's no surprise that that exists and has existed in the religious community for years. You evil will, like a liquid, seep into whatever crack it can find in a surface, <clears throat> and the weaknesses of character of these teachers who don't take their vows seriously and their role as a spiritual advisor seriously and a practitioner in any shape or form, they're just hiding behind that role to further their goals like any uh, well-hidden predator would. Uh, two, that come to, two that come to mind are uh, Chokyo Trumpa, who was the um, the Tibetan teacher in the U.S. that the whole Nalanda University in Colorado was founded on, and he was well known to stick his hands up nuns' uh, uh, robes into their in, into their crotches, and <clears throat> he was a drunk. Um, and then people will <coughs> uh, justify these teachers' manic behaviors as what they term crazy wisdom, which is a type of what's called upaya in Buddhism, which means skillful means, and in acting in a manner contradictive to social standards, the teacher is breaking down the solidified clinging mind of the students. Um, 
unfortunately such a doctrine gives way to all types of abuse to people that don't have a meaning behind it to just get the teacher off. Uh, there's, there's nothing else to it. It's simple hiding behind the liturgy for preda predatorial behavior. Uh, this is seen in uh, Christian religions over and over with giving the seed of God to the uh, children in their congregation. And I mean children. They're just pedophiles. Um, a new scholar has come out that has openly talked about the well-known practice in Tibetan monasteries to rape and molest the little boys given to them by the parents to become monks in the monasteries for life. So they are it's just a cesspool of disgusting predatorial behavior that has no uh, role in religion whatsoever. But this comes back to a uh, greater point about how evil works amongst us. Um, call it what you want, the Luciferian uh, means and propaganda, the Illuminati, uh, uh, in Buddhism we call it Mara, which means like illusion or delusion. It's the processing force in our realm that creates clinging and delusion and suffering in beings and feeds off that. This movement of corruption, as we call it in, a, in, in my tradition, the corruption, because it is a very suitable term for what this movement does, which is taint everything it comes in contact with. The uh, media and government and propaganda and various groups seek to destroy us from without and within. It is to corrupt us at our very being, to lure us back into this world, to cling to it and take further rebirth, thereby progenerating another life of addiction and suffering. Uh, <clears throat> This is at the core of Buddhist philosophy. We just uh, don't use the same language that is very uh, prevalent now in the uh, internet and videos and such. But we've been fighting that battle since 5th, 6th century BC with our philosophy and the teachings of the Buddha. That's why Buddhism at its heart is about separation from the world, from material gains and focus. The Trishna, the thirst, the craving, the desire that is at the root of Dukkha, which is suffering and dissatisfaction more appropriately. So uh, we also believe in the same philosophy. Uh, human beings become a vehicle for this suffering and are guided to gain negative karma, which, like a uh, tar, taints the Buddha nature that we possess to guide us along a faulted path of destructive thinking for others and our own um, souls for better terminology, our nature. And this imbalance creates suffering in ourselves for this life and further life, coming back again and again to a hell that we are tortured in. And these realms are not only literal physical states that we talk about, but are emotional and psychological states that people exist in. There's a reason these realms are a place of suffering. 
these beings feed on suffering. So, going back to what I was originally talking about, which is the corruptions of the uh, spiritual traditions on this planet, the corruption uh, seeks to infest you. And because of that, the spiritual traditions teach you ways in which to resist this corruption and reach a higher, a lighter state. That's why the symbolism of hell below, heaven above. It's about being dragged down by the chains and the yokes of defilements we do to ourselves. Uh, Akusala, which is unskillful behavior, the poisons, as the Buddha called them, for appropriate reasoning, uh, the anger and craving and ignorance and pride and vanity and, and, and jealousy and all these things are corrupting us at our core, and that's what the corruption of this world wants, the Mara. And the religious traditions teach us how to distinguish what is right and wrong, what is skillful and unskillful, what is hurtful and destructive to others and ourselves through our action, speech, and thought. The religious traditions teach this. The corrupt knows this and knows that going after you externally, you have these skills to resist its influence. So knowing this, the corrupt is very wily and very uh, influential in the subtleties at which it worms its way into your being, in your brain, in your body little by little contorting you into a deformed version of your illuminated nature and you embrace destruction and darkness. So the corrupt knowing this has decided it will use its followers that it has tainted and corrupt those who go into these spiritual traditions that are not of this world and turn these teachers who then become instructors in these traditions to then corrupt the traditions at their core and pervert them thereby tainting them also through proxy to then pervert what is taught to you as a follower to then lead a life of this world and justify leading a worldly life by saying that is an extension of perfecting the religious tradition. It's very insidious and a smart uh, manner with which to approach the problem of breaking down people's will so that the delusion can enter into your bloodstream and affect you on a very molecular level, literally, contorting and perverting you into a mutant of what you are meant to become, which is a beautiful, light, luminous, balanced being, not suffering. Uh, so you see this in the prosperity gospels that have arisen in the various religious traditions, including Buddhism. We have sects within our own ranks that tell you to chant for that job, chant for that beautiful Mercedes Benz, chant for that hot husband or wife you want chant for a successful business. The nature of doing that is very insidious and perverts the 
original intent of the practice to get you further away from that. Because the system around us, the uh, cage with which we are in, which appears to most to be invisible, with those of us who have delved into our third eye and have cleared the dust from our eyes and truly see the real reflection of what is going on, realize how contorted and perverted the system has become. And <clears throat> that's why the New Age systems have risen up as a form of uh, spiritual practice that people like to say. Now, I'm not saying all of the New Age practices are bad, but the problem is people are hodgepodging a spiritual practice that has no end goal whatsoever, like normal systematic religious practices have. And we have standards of accomplishment and levels you work through literally attaining wisdom and knowledge to some degree. And these New Age traditions just throw together various practices and then say, well, I'm an enlightened being. I'm so woke, as they like to say. I'm so awakened. Well, who's told you you are? Well, no one. I know I am. Okay, so you're not self-deluding yourself? Oh, no, definitely not. I know better. That's just what a self-deluded person would say. So, you've proven nothing yet again. Um... Now, that's not to say systems can't be corrupt, but when we look at our gains spiritually, they are not goods gathered up in this world by any means. They should be wisdom that has been gathered, that sets us apart from those chained to this world and yoked like a... yoked like a... Uh, bowl that is carrying a cart and all of our possessions and materialisms is the cart we're pulling behind us and Mara is the driver waving the carrot in front of the donkey leading you along uh, your spiritualism is not accomplishments in this world per se so to correlate the two together is really nothing short of a perversion. So, you need to understand these traditions, if there's no manner in which you're attaining accomplishment, you're just picking up a meditation here or there, or doing some uh, various yoga, or chanting this or that, or... Uh, doing, working with pendulums that a supposed spirit is showing you where it's moving towards, that's not accomplishing anything. Uh, that's like learning various punches and kicks and just doing them repeatedly over and over, but not putting two and two together in application in life and combining them into some system where you're accomplishing a goal. It's, uh, like I have said, people that gain ten white belts in a system and then hodgepodge together that that's what they're teaching. They don't have a deep accomplishment. It's a horizontal, it's a, uh, it's ten things, it's, it's ten things horizontally wide, but an inch deep, as opposed to one thing an inch wide, but a mile deep. There's a big difference. 
And that's why, especially in this age, we need leadership in teachers that are role models to get us out of our skin and into our natures that we truly have and seek a way out of this cage and not be reborn in it and move to a higher existence. So be very wary of what you're being taught. Uh, and of course, as a seeker and a student, you have to have uh, what's called in Buddhism, Shraddha, which is faith in what you're doing. And one of the first level markers in learning that you're getting somewhere and entering into the stream of the Dharma is getting rid of doubt because you see the results. You see the goal in mind. You see where your uh, teacher's methods are moving you towards. And that's why it is at the base of realizing you're moving in the Dharma. Uh, and so you need to find a system that is getting you somewhere away from this flesh cage, this bag of uh, urine and feces we're walking around in. So this is why many people who are adamant about their religious traditions whether it's the Muslim or the Christian or the Buddhist, uh, leave the world and go off to the uh, cave to endeavor finding their true self. The desert fathers of the hesychastic tradition of Christianity, the Sufis of the Muslims who wandered the desert in silence with nature, um, and the yogis and hermits of the Buddhist tradition living in the caves and in the forests. We have left society for a more harmonious existence that doesn't base itself on material goods. And to end this discussion with a real prevalent point, I remember being taken by a fellow martial artist to a Buddhist temple in the Columbus area to talk to the resident monk. He was the only one that was there at the time. And when we pulled up, I saw a uh, fire red Corvette sitting in the parking lot. Then in there I knew there was trouble. I mean, it's, that's so funny in itself to just know, oh, the monk's the only one here, and then there's a sports car in the parking lot. Yeah, you're doing it wrong. And when I, dis I talked to the monk about Buddhism, we got into a debate of sorts about the Dharma, and me even bringing up simple facts about Dharmatic teaching, he had no clue what I was talking about. <clears throat> he was just a wolf in sheep's clothing. And come to find out, <clears throat> ironically, of course, since I could tell this from the onset of arriving, the whole temple was nothing but a cult to build a so called paradise island in a uh, Thailand area that basically idolated these rich aristocratic royal figures. And it was about money, money, money. A perfect example of followers of Mara in the uh, cloaks of Buddhism. You know, you can put on the robes and it doesn't mean the body beneath the robes isn't seeping with sores of corruption. These people hide everywhere. Don't think your local guru, monk, or priest is above corruption. They're not. You would hope the skills they learn would prevent it. Doesn't mean it's going to happen. 
be very wary. So I wanted to talk about that to, about that today and discuss the corruption of the traditions and what you need to look out for. So thank you for joining me, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you.